so continuing the updates, uh, I'm going to pass it off to Devis to give some updates on kernel memory, which there's been quite a few since the last time Devis shared. Hello, everybody. Hi, thank you for sharing. Give me some time. I try to be fast. There is a lot of content, but also a lot of questions uh, in the next slides. So for who, uh, for people that, know, that don't know, the kernel memory is basically the new implementation of the, the memory pattern that we moved. We are moving from semantic kernel into its own solution. It has its own repo, and um, there has been a lot of work in the last month to reach the first milestone, which is basically having a plugin that you can use to replace the old plugin uh, in semantic kernel. So the first thing that we did uh, since the uh, what is this way now? Okay, since the last update, we have been uh, revisiting the structure of the repo a little bit. So now the repo is structured in uh, two main areas: the clients and the service. So the idea here is that you should run this, the memory as a service so that you can ingest data asynchronously. You can have pipelines running in the background. Uh, for .NET, there is still a way to run it without a service, but we really want to push into this idea that like as, as you run SQL Server or Cosmos DB as a service, the memory itself is a service. So one thing that we have done, we added API keys. So now you can deploy the service in the cloud. Uh, without having to put in front a proxy and it has you can specify a couple of api keys in the configuration um, so that would allow you to protect the service by default they are empty so it's up to you to set them up then we there is a folder uh, called uh, clients where we currently have the dotnet clients so there is a web client which is basically uh, talking to the service and implements the ai memory interface there it is, memory web client implementing the icon or memory interface. And there is a plugin, which is what you can use with the kernel, with the planners to talk to your memory. And I will show you a little bit of code later. Uh, since we've done these changes, we also published a new set of packages. These are the new packages that we have. There is a new package, import, very important one, called abstractions that contains all the interfaces and the classes is compatible with .NET standard 2.0, so it should work pretty much everywhere. And we, you can use these abstractions to build extensions to the current memory. For example, so as this has been coming up a lot, like can I use Postgres, can I use Elasticsearch, can I use hybrid search? These abstractions will, is a fundamental piece for that. And then, for example, we uh, we created a repo to show how you would extend the kernel memory with Postgres. So if you look at this repo, it basically shows you uh, you can create a new memory storage class. You uh, you only need to take dependency on the kernel memory abstractions, nothing else. So you can work without that 6.0 or even uh, the framework maybe, and you just have to implement this interface i vector db which is going to be we are renaming the interface but the approach is still the same you can say i want to work with Postgres, implement the interface so there are a few methods to implement all of these are empty right now but they just give you an idea how easy it is to plug in your own storage and then there are some helpers for dependence injection so you can easily import Postgres in this case like you can say with Postgres or if you're using the build the builder, or you can typically do service collection methods like add Postgres as vector DB. So very simple. The idea is that we're going to have several repos like this, one for each connector. If you look at the um, semantic kernel folders, you see we have a lot of memory connectors here: Chroma, DuckDB, Custo, etc. We would like the community to help here and not having everyone to work on the same repo. Like you want to use Chroma, you want to use DuckDB, you want to use wv 8 please create a repo and follow the same pattern. It should be very simple and we can all work around one connector without having to worry about the rest as long as we follow that interface. We can help standing them up, but typically you might want to stand it up on yourself. It doesn't be it doesn't need to be owned by Microsoft. 
I saw there was a question about Weaviate. Like all the files have these copyright by Microsoft. It doesn't need to be like that. You know, it's just code. You can publish the NuGet package. For example, if you look here, there is a, a, a Llama Sharp kernel memory package. You can deploy your own and we will help uh, advertise your extension. We will call it out in the repo, say, for example, in the memory repo, we say here we have a list of supported um, uh, backends. We can say, OK, we're going to add these other into the list if you deploy something new to, to new get. Uh, other things, um, let me see. So for people who wanted to work in Elasticsearch, this is exactly our suggestion. So please create a repo for Elasticsearch, extend, uh, take dependency on that package, the extension, abstraction, sorry, and implement the interface, and we will help you advertise and make it uh, work. Then, of course, there is going to be breaking changes over time. We're trying to stop doing that with the kernel, but also with the memory. There is one particular breaking change coming uh, this week that we'll explain in a second. And uh, talking about the um, the plugin, if you want to see how that works, now in the repo there is a, a new notebook showing how you would use the semantic, the current memory with the kernel. So using uh, the latest beta, this is the latest version we had when we published the new get the the notebook. You set up the usual credentials, blah blah blah. So here, uh, this is the kernel builder. So we prepared the, the kernel to work with Azure, with OpenAI. And then we set up the kernel memory. We say, I'm running my memory service on this endpoint locally. Uh, this is my memory, my API key, which is .m file. I stand up a client, which you could call connector in the old uh, world, like the kernel. I'm going to give it a name. I want to call it memory. And then you do the usual kernel dot import functions, an instance of the plugin. The plugin constructor takes a dependency on the connector, so this client. And you can also set up the plugin in a couple of ways. You can say whenever I write, I want to wait for my when I am plotting a document, I want to wait for that document to be completely memorized. Or I don't. Like I don't want to wait, just send the write. And, and that's it. So it could be much faster, but it depends on your scenario. Then here, what we're doing, we're uploading uh, some text, like this is a copy and paste from um, Wikipedia about Orion, which is a set of stars. And then I'm using the same connector or the plugin to upload a file, which is here. Uh, this is a news about Orion from August, I think. Uh, so we're uploading this file through the plugin, using the plugin. So the system automatically extracts the text, chunk it, put in memory, using embeddings and all that. And I'm calling the save file. Here you see I'm using the, the plugin. I could do the same using the connector. It's just, it's up to you which one, are, depending on your scenario. So here now I have two memories. One about Orion as a set of stars, and one about Orion as a um, spacecraft. OK, so the old memory plugin would allow you to recall facts as a list of um, text, like list of strings coming from database. The new plugin has this ask method that you can use in your prompts. Like I'm providing a question, then I'm calling the plugin.ask method with that, in, with that question. So these will be replaced with the answer coming from the service. And I'm, I'm doing some work here. Like if the answer is, um, I don't know, like sometimes the, the memory will reply, I don't know. Sorry, if the answer is empty, say, I don't know. Otherwise reply with a preview of the answer, truncated to 50 words, blah, 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 prefix with an emoji. So just, just to show you how you can compose the plugin with prompts in the, the usual way. And here, uh, create a function, semantic function for, for this prompt. So now here, we now we run it. I think uh, this was the old name of the function I renamed because it was confusion, confusing. So for example, any news from NAS about Orion? So the, the service will reply back with an answer like Orion 
Uh, yeah, there is a conference call, blah, blah, blah. And now our prompt is re-elaborating using this command. And it's also adding an emoji in front. You can see here, like now there's in writing media, which is relevant because we're talking about spacecraft. And then I'm asking another question, what is Orion? Now here in memory, we have two definitions. Orion is a set of stars, and also the memory has inferred that Orion is a spacecraft from the news. So we get this answer. Orion is a constellation and also an ASA spacecraft. So these are everything coming together here, as you can see. Simple example. And now you should be able to store your data and from JSON, from PDF, from documents, from presentations, and being able to use these ask questions and do whatever you want, like injecting into in a chat. Other things more technical, we have upgraded the dependencies in the kernel. So we're using the latest uh, kernel, semantic kernel beta 8. And we also upgraded the text in the community to the latest um, search uh, to the stable version 11.5, which is using the latest vector search settings and syntax for, um, for vector search. And we also upgraded poly, rabbit and flu, and other things. We have replaced our custom cosine similarity implementation with the one coming from the .NET team in system numeric extensor. So this is now this cosine similarity method. We're using that. We're not using our, our hours anymore, which was an unsafe method. And other things, the prompts can be customizable. I don't know if I already gave this news last time. When you call, when you stand up the service, there is a set of custom prompts which are used for the rack pattern. Now those prompts can be uh, can be customized. I think uh, prompts here they really are. So now these prompt, which is the one used to generate an answer, can be customized if you like. And one important thing in progress. So there is this. If you've used Azure AI Search, you might have seen this new feature new, relatively new, called semantic ranking. You can basically write text. Don't worry about embeddings, and they do everything for you. So in order to enable to get there, we have this change, which is in progress. We are renaming the iVectorDB interface to iMemoryDB. And when we search, so when you implement your memory connector, like Postgres, Elasticsearch, or Azure AI search. Now your search method will not receive, doesn't require an input and embedding, but we receive the user text. Now it's up to you to do what, to decide what to do with the text. You might want to calculate the embedding locally in your class, or you might want to pass the text to your database, like Azure AI search, and let it let it they do the all the work generally. Uh, this works also with Chroma DB, if you know the you can optionally uh, configure Chrome DB to automatically do the embedding internally for you, which is nice. You don't have to worry about the complexity. So this change makes it more flexible so that we can later on implement hybrid search, which is another feature that has been asked for a lot of time, like the ability to combine vector search and semantic search and text search. And I think um, without everything, any questions? So the biggest question that I see in the chat is mostly about, sounds like there's desire and eagerness to create these connectors from the community, but there's a question on exactly like how to do so, because as you can see, right, there's it's like, okay, maybe having different repos adds more complexity. And especially if you have licensing concerns, right, it could, introduce a complex situation. <laughs> so yeah, I said, yeah, the thing is that I think the idea that Microsoft can create a connector for every database in the world doesn't scale. So it's preferable having individual data individual repos where we focus on an individual database like Elasticsearch or I don't know, MongoDB. Or anything. I mean, there will be more and more in the future. Or even services like Fabric. You might want to use Fabric as a database where you put data, you read out. And 
then who owns who drives that i think is best if the community takes care of it because uh, we are currently very active on this we might not have the same resources a year from now and we don't want to abandon the project or they or suddenly disappear and the, the community will think oh what do we do about that now so I think we're available now to help you strapping that process that we can help you setting up a repo. If it is owned by Microsoft, we won't be able to transfer the ownership. So I think it's better if it is if the repo is created by the individual companies like VP8 and uh, Pinecone and etc. And then we can help. We can be the main contributors uh, just for the start and then we let it go and say, OK, now you see the interface and you can add as many options as you like. And there also can be multiple connectors for the same storage. Like you don't need to have only one for Python or only one for VV8. You might have a different idea. Say I want to use VV8 differently, or my company does something special with Azure AI Search. And rather than waiting for Microsoft to create a connector with all the options, I'm going to go and do my own. We just we provide the interface if the interface is useful. Otherwise, please give us feedback. We can make it easier. We can add new methods or we can revisit the existing ones so that everything comes together. I think ideally from a user perspective, from a developer perspective, I just want to use the plugin and I want to choose a connector without having to worry too much about the implementation details. So we try to make it easy. We have the plugin now. The plugin will be available also for other languages like Python and Java and Node.js. Writing a plugin is easy because you just have to write a web, a web client. And we try to create a community around the storage part. Like everyone comes up with a new storage, we can help them uh, creating a connector. Awesome. Alessandro, I see your hand up. Yeah, quick question, uh, Davis, that came from uh, your, your demo earlier. Uh, um, can we swap the, the embedding generator? I'd like to use a, a 384 dimension model in, in terminal. Yes. We can do that too. Absolutely, yes. Yeah. You can swap it, and to some degree, you can also use more than one embedding generator. I haven't tried yet, but if somebody wants to try having multiple embeddings, it is possible like the design allows it uh, i've never tried there might be some bugs but you could say i want to store in my records a very lightweight embedding and then a more heavy uh, expensive embedding and now i have two embeddings i can use i have logic to fall back from one to the other or i might want to compare the quality or I might, you might have scenarios where one is good enough because it's fast the other one is more expensive you use it only in specific scenario so I think from uh, we try to allow the one idea behind the kernel memory was to enable experimentation. Like if you have some crazy idea, like you want to use multiple models, custom models, local models, or you, you don't want to use any embeddings, just full text search. We want to allow that. So the interface should be designed to enable you also the way that we compose dependencies should should you should allow to do that. 